Well, hello, Viking fans, and welcome to this edition of the L Billy Skinner Lamar Viking Football Coaches Show. I'm Bill Frawley, and with me, as always, of course, is head football coach Billy Skinner. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's a beautiful Monday morning and ready to work. Good deal. I uh, Hopefully my voice doesn't go the Chris Collinsworth route from a couple of weeks ago when he had that, I've got a little bit of allergies and raspiness, but I think I'll be able to make it okay. I heard there was a lot of complaints from folks whenever he was doing that broadcast and gotcha. I heard part of it. So anyway, sorry, I ramble as I always do. That's okay. Hey, I may suffer from that too. I've, uh, the allergies have been kicking my butt for about three weeks. So I understand for sure. All right. Well, as we talked about about a week ago, uh, last week was an open week and it gave the chance to work on some fundamentals. And as you always say, we're working on Viking football um, as well as heal some bumps and bruises. So let's start off with coach. What types of improvements did you and the coaching staff see last week? Well, you know, I saw an improvement just in practice tempo. Um, it's really difficult sometimes to get kiddos to uh, go as fast as they can, knowing that there's not a game this week. So, hey, what are we really preparing for? And so fighting that and our kids doing a really good job of fighting that mindset of, hey, there's nothing to prepare for this week. Well, no, that's not true. Uh, the most important team to prepare for this week is us like it is every week. So um, just to see how our tempo didn't it not only did it not drop off, but it, it, it upped uh, and, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday were probably two of our best practices of the year. Uh, and they were two of our most intense practices of the year. So uh, very pleased with that. Um, we did a really good job of saving some legs. We did have some kids who were banged up a little bit. And so we were um, cautious with them and allowed them to uh, have a little bit of time to recover. But um, a, a lot of positives last week. And I think one of the biggest positives last week is it was the end of our six weeks. Um, and so it gave us an opportunity every day to go get um, academically healthy as well for those that needed the extra support. Excellent. Well, good deal. And I love that positive, positivity, positive, whatever. It seems like new words are made up all the time, but, um, <laughs> but of the upbeat tempo workouts in a time when it could be easy to sort of deflate a little bit or flatten. Right. So that's awesome, actually. Well, speaking of kind of some bumps and bruises, saving legs, um, I'm going to ask this very generally because I know there's ways to answer this, but how close is the team to being at full strength, both in terms of um, all players being able to hit the field and then those who have just been banged up a little bit. Right. And we're right on the cusp. We're right on the cusp of having everybody at as full strength as you can be in, in week six. This is week six of a football season. And so um, obviously nobody's going to feel as good as they did uh, at the beginning of August. But um, we're almost there to having everybody back on track and everybody um, feeling as good as you can at this point. Excellent. Well, that sounds really good. And another positive because <laughs> this week begins district play hosting the crosstown rival Martin Warriors Friday night at Cravens Field. Coach, this often seems to be the type of game that no matter who's favored or who seems to be stronger that year or whatever, anything can happen. What are your thoughts? No doubt about it. I mean, we, we are going to uh, prepare to win. And I think a lot of times you face teams like Martin High School, or you face teams like Waxahachie, you face teams that have uh, the big number next to their name saying that they're number what, whatever in the state. And so um, some people, coaches, kids, will see that and kind of cower down a little bit. And that's just not how we will operate in our program. Um, we study and we had an extra week to kind of study some of the things that they do and some of the things they do really well. Um, and it, we've had an opportunity to uh, prep for that and to combat that. And then I'm excited about having a week of, of preparation for them and playing them on Friday. But um, obviously, it's a great football team. It's a great program uh, that's going on over there. Um, but I'm just I'm really excited for our kids to, to meet the challenge. And I can tell you, when I look into our guys' eyes, I can see no back down. I can see no shutdown. I can see no quit. I can see no, um, oh gosh, here we go. I see guys fired up and, and ready to ready to go get after it. You know, and I've seen that this season, Coach, in the games that I've been able to be at in person, that there is that VFND, Viking Fight Never Die spirit. And whether it's after a certain play that maybe didn't go right, 
maybe a, a call didn't go right as far as people are concerned from the officials or a game didn't go right. They are, they're not backing down and talking to some of the players or texting with some of them after games. I really sense that also. No, and it's, you know, you let's, let's be real. Martin's probably, um, they probably have the best special teams unit in the state of Texas. They put um, an emphasis and a premium on, on specials and it shows up on tape. And so uh, for us, we spent an entire week really starting our game plan on that because that's when you look up and you see a team scores 50 points or you see a team scores 60 points. And I mean, we saw it ourselves in the Waxahachie game, 31 of our points in the Waxahachie game were a direct uh, were directly from just punt, just us punting the football. That's 31 points in field position and fumbles and things like that that we gave up. And so teams like Martin, uh, they capitalize on um, poor performances in the special teams game. And so um, that's a huge emphasis for us. We want to make sure that we're very, very sharp in all facets of the specials. Um, I think if we can do that and we can play that clean, um, this can be one of those games that you're talking about. And so um, really, really excited about that challenge. Really excited about it. You know, it's interesting you put that emphasis because, you know, a lot of people think about, oh, offense or defense or the O-line did this or the defensive backs, you know, put pressure or the, the rushing yardage, the passing. But that is such an important element that I think gets focused when something goes really well or really bad but otherwise it's not on the top of a lot of people's minds. So that's really neat that you brought that up. So, well, um, how about some JV and freshman updates? How are things going on those squads? Again, the open week and just kind of uh, also they're moving into district play as well. Yep. So a lot of positives, actually. Um, this last week, again, sub varsities, freshmen, JV, um, it's easy to buy week. You know, they're younger kids. So, hey, it's a bye week. That means it's supposed to be super easy, right? And it's like, no, 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 guys. We we work at a tempo. And the fact that they were able to come in and match our energy and match that tempo um, at such a young age for our freshmen and then for some of our sophomore JV kids just to see that, hey, oh, no, no, this isn't time off. And so very, very proud of them for uh, buying into what it is that we do and who we are. Um, and then I got to give a special shout out uh, to both of our, our sub varsity teams or our three sub varsity teams. We've got two freshmen and one JV. Um, last year, looking at grades, um, we were really, really, it, it was poor on the sub varsity. I'll just say it that way. It was really <laughs> poor on the sub varsity. We went so bad on our freshmen um, that we actually had to go to one team. Um, and looking at the preliminary grades right now, uh, it looks like. Um, we're going to be in a lot better shape than we were last year. You know, that was one of our big goals coming into this year was the academic piece and making sure that we kept um, as many kids eligible as possible. Um, and that is a testament to guys like Harvey Wiggins, who's our JV head coach, who, I mean, that guy works tirelessly at anything that we put in front of him. Uh, you know, we, we told him he was going to be that JV head coach and he takes it. He owns it. He makes sure that his kids are doing what they're supposed to in classes. He's making sure they're doing what they're supposed to in practice. Uh, so uh, kudos to him. Kudos to John Gill, who is uh, one of our freshman coaches who um, in his one on one meeting this summer said, hey, coach, I kind of want to take ownership of the freshman academics. I want to be the uh, point of contact for them. And so looking at their numbers. Um, so proud of that dude for, for wanting to take that up, because that was a large uh, portion of his job this year. <laughs> and that's uh, the fact that he came in and said, hey, I want to be that guy academically. That's awesome. And so uh, shout out to those two for um, making that vision a reality uh, for our kids. And so very, very encouraged by the grades of our sub varsities and very encouraged that we're going to still have two freshman teams and we're going to have quite a few of our JV guys still with us. Oh, that's really, really good news. And it's got to be a challenge because I can only imagine kind of the range of, you know, either ability, some people struggle with learning or also just the desire to learn and, and the way that y'all are making kind of football as a motive to work hard in the classroom so you can still do this now and maybe in the future. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, and it's, it's so hard as at that age, 
you are, you're invincible. That's what you think. There is no, there is no tomorrow almost. And so what we try to remind our kids is my, my last play that I ever got to play a football um, and, and I was lucky I got to play four years of, of high school and four years of college, but I, I tore my ACL, my very last play and that was it. And so, um, the fact that I was able to take the academic piece serious, uh, allowed me to do what I want to do professionally. And so, uh, you know, we, we try to remind the kids that it, this thing does not last forever. Uh, and you've got to have something to fall back on. And, and normally that education piece and normally those books are, that's a, that's a pretty good landing spot. Sure. And you mentioned like the, the younger guys or whatever. And then I think of all of a sudden, all the distractions that are out there too, you know, <laughs> girlfriends, home life, whatever it might be, jobs, all that stuff. There's so many things going on and it seems multiplied over when I think I'm older than you are, now, but when you and I were younger, gotcha. no, we're close. We're close. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks coach. <laughs> Have you ever gotten the automatic senior discount at Taco Bell? Not yet, but it's coming. My, you know what? <laughs> What's that? I, I hadn't shaved this weekend, and um, my wife looked at me because all I want is some gray hair. I really do. I want just a couple of pieces Man, of gray hair. Here. <laughs> and she she looked at my facial hair, and she looked real close at my beard. She's like, hey, um, I think it's happening. I think you've got three of them. <laughs> and so I pull up my phone to look at it, and then I realize I've been petting the dog. And so it's just oh, white no. hair from the dog. So I was able to wipe it out. Uh, oh, that's so funny. no, no, no senior discounts <laughs> yet, but well, I, had, I had that happen at Taco Bell a few years ago in Lumberton near Beaumont and looked at the receipt and I said, I was like, hmm, this doesn't look right. And then the lady, young lady gives me a cup for a drink. I said, I didn't order a drink. She goes, it comes free with the senior discount. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> anyway, sorry, we get way distracted. My fault. All right. So coach, thanks. Speaking of distractions. Hey, do you have any favorite NFL or college teams? I do. Um, obviously, Sam Houston State. I'm a Bearcat. So uh, always pulling for them. And then uh, anytime we have kids that play at places, I'm always pulling for those teams. So I may be the only OU because we've got Trey West there and, and Texas because we've got Isaiah Nayor there. So um, I, I pull for a lot of the the kids in college football, um, but I am one of those guys. And, and by that, I mean, I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. And uh, I start every year and I started this year, just like I start every year. And it's I will not let them take my joy. Um, and <laughs> without fail, they, they, they bring you back in, they pull you in, and they take your joy. And so I'm going to try to stick to it this year, but I, I can't quit them. I try it. I've tried before. And, you know, people look at me, well, why do you still cheer for? It? I just, I don't know. It's in my blood. And unfortunately, I've, I've now passed it on to my children as well. So uh, get ready for a lifetime of, Cowboys disappointment, I guess. <laughs> well, I was I was having a conversation this weekend with my sons who were both home from college, and we were talking about how you know sons and daughters, kids will just adopt usually or quite often the team that their parents root for, and uh, whether it's the local team or somewhere halfway across the country, and then you know you wonder why am I a Green Bay Packers fan? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yep. Yep. Well, my daughter, she she also likes the Dolphins, and it's because they have the coolest uniforms out. So <laughs> there you go. She'll, she'll tell you she's a Dolphins fan. <laughs> well, hey, as long as you have a good reason, right? <laughs> All right. Well, Coach, um, hey, does the team still need Gatorade donations? Um, absolutely. No, <laughs> anytime we can get them, we will absolutely take them, and they are tearing them up. We, we're yeah. back in action this week, so we're definitely going to be dipping into the Gatorade supply always need to have that replenish. Awesome. Okay. And uh, what else do you want to say about the booster club? How awesome they are working those concession stands, providing funding and support in so many ways that don't even get really seen. They are invaluable. And I'm, I'm one of those people. I don't enjoy meetings and things like that. It's not my absolute favorite, but um, whenever I get that alert that we have our booster club board meeting on a Sunday afternoon, I'm genuinely excited to sit with them. I'm genuinely excited to see them. And, um, you know, we, we talked about the Kool-Aid pickles at our last board oh, meeting good. <laughs> and, and J.R. Walker was telling us that, you know, there's, there's something special in there. He can't give you the full recipe, but, okay. you know, you, uh, 
but just those kind of conversations, that kind of stuff, it's a, it's a great time. And it's, it's really, it's refreshing to have uh, parents and people uh, in our program that care so deeply about um, their kids and care so deeply about other people's kids. So um, always looking for more um, people to come join us, always looking for more people to join the board and join the committees and, and do things like helping out with concessions on Thursday night. So all of that is greatly appreciated. And um, if again, if you want to join, you just need to let me know or get a hold of J.R. Walker or, or Jeremy Austin and they'll get you set up. Perfect. Well, it always is great. All the level of support that they provide in so many ways. So, uh, Coach, before we sign off, anything else that you would like to talk about or mention? I've got to give two shout outs um, and I, I'm, I'm going to try to be as delicate as I can because I know there's some things that I can't say. Um, but I've got a couple of kids in our football program that have I'm, I'm huge into growth. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, that's probably my favorite thing about coaching is, is you start with something that's not good at all in, in football. And by the end of the season, you kind of see what looks like or could be interpreted as football. Um, well, I like I like to see that with people. And I've got two kiddos in our program who uh, one of them, and I'll say his name, Damian Sanchez. He's a senior defensive lineman for us. Mm -hmm. um, historically, he has struggled academically, not because of anything other than just um, it, it has not taken it as serious as he should have. Well, I say that to say he is five points away from having all A's in every single class this first six weeks. And so just to see that kid come so far, it, it, it does. I, I've got goosebumps right now thinking about his growth and thinking about the things that he's done uh, in order to make sure that he can stay on the field for his team uh, and support his brothers. And so Damian Sanchez is a kid I want to shout out for, um, for taking care of his business in the classroom and not only taking care of his business, but um, excelling way beyond what people thought he was capable of. And so very proud of him. And then another kiddo I've got is uh, Corey Wilson. He is a sophomore for us. And um, last year, he was almost removed from the program uh, for, for this or that, struggled academically. Um, he was one that um, he would come and tell me, coach, I'm, I'm probably going to, I'm going to quit anyway. I'm about to quit anyway. And uh, we just kept loving him and he kept coming back and kept loving him and he kept coming back and he keeps coming back this summer. He was very consistent spring ball. He was very consistent fall camp when we're going at five 30 in the morning and you're like, Oh, he may struggle here. He was very consistent showing up, showing up. And he's another one that I, I pulled up his grades this morning. And I, I, I think I audibly yelled because I was so proud of this kid. He's done everything he's can. And now he's going to be academically eligible and uh, just, his hard work is really, really starting to show up. And he's one of those kiddos that that you point to about um, why we're so proud of our program and why we're so proud of what we do here and why what we do is important. And so sometimes it's um, you look at records and you look at this and you look at that and, and you're like, oh, we having a lot of success. And then I look at Damian Sanchez and I look at Corey Wilson and I can say unequivocally, hell yes, we're having success because of these kids. So very proud of those two dudes. That is so awesome to hear about and what examples they're setting to their peers and being role models right there within the heart of the program. And, and you know, Coach, I have a part-time job working with youth and those kinds of stories. Wow, because that gets right to the thing you always say. We're not just hoping or preparing or making it win the game, but they're ready for more life lessons that way. They're ready for what life's going to bring them, the preparation of overcoming these things. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. All right. Anything else you'd like to say before we uh, close it off for today? That's all I've got for today. I appreciate you, man. I got to tell you, I really, I, I look forward to this time uh, each week and, um, I, I really enjoyed our friendship and I really enjoy doing this with you. Well, thank you so much. It's mutual and I do too. And whether it's uh, Sunday afternoon at home or Sunday afternoon on the road or Monday morning in my office, whatever it is, I enjoy it also. And thanks for making this happen, coach. Oh, you bet. All right. Well, until next time, I'm Bill Farley with head Viking football coach, Billy Skinner saying VFND. VFND.